Hello, quarantined math 10 class. I hope all are doing well and that we're being nice and safe. And um, yeah, so sorry we don't have regular classes, but we're gonna make do and have online classes and continue our chapter on unit conversions. So our next section that we're gonna be talking about are SI units. SI units are stand for international systems. And uh, I know it says SI units, and I wrote down I S units. And then the reason is, is because SI units were created in France, and they're called Système du International. Um, but in English-speaking countries like our own, we just say uh, international uh, system of units. Um, now, um, this is a little bit different than the imperial system. Uh, the imperial system is heavily used in the United States as well as a few other countries, but um, we have to know the imperial system because of our close relation uh, culturally and financially to the United States. So a few examples of SI units are our distances. We use distances. We talk about, we measure our distances in kilometers and uh, we usually talk about our temperatures in things like celsius and stuff like that um, and these are all si units um, now even though culturally speaking we still use uh, imperial units if i were to ask you how tall you are you would probably tell me in feet and inches which are uh imperial units okay so we talked about feet and inches um but on your driver's license it will say uh the international system it'll say for si units it'll say in centimeters on your driver's license how tall you are also for your weight on your driver's license it'll say how many kilograms you are but you probably know how many kilo, uh your weight in pounds and pounds is an imperial unit. And the reason why we still use this thing is because of culturally, we're so closely tied with the United States that we still talk in this kind of manner. Um, and it's for that reason why we have to be able to kind of convert back and forth uh, fairly fluidly um, because of our close relations. Anyways, hopefully you have your data booklet in front of you. And we have it onto this page right here, which all talks about SI units and uh, some imperial units and how to convert between these two. So we're going to jump into our first example right here, and that is converting between these two units. We have an example question right here. And if you look at your notes that I've uploaded to Microsoft Teams, you should find these examples in there as well. So you could follow along with... Uh, with what I'm doing up in this PowerPoint. Um, anyways, we have an example here. It says, Leslie is baking apple pies. According to her recipe, she needs six pounds of apples. The bag of apples she bought only shows kilograms. How many kilograms of apples does she need? So what we need to do is we're gonna take our six pounds. And so the symbol for pounds is LBS. So six pounds and I have here uh, how to convert between imperial and SI, and we find all the way down uh, between pounds and kilograms, we see 2.2 .2 pounds is roughly equal to one kilogram. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of rewrite that out there. 2.2 .2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. Now, Right, when I have just like a single unit like this, when it says six pounds right here, and it's just one number and there's nothing underneath here, um, you're gonna consider this to being the top unit, the, the numerator. The denominator is, technically speaking, is one, but um, we can kind of just ignore that and just say uh, 
this is just six pounds okay so this is on the top this pounds is on the top if i want this pounds to go away i need to cancel it out by putting pounds on the bottom and kilograms on the top okay now i'm using these numbers here to fill in my conversion so this 2.2 is associated with pounds so i'm going to put this 2.2 associated with this pounds and this one kilo goes up here because it's next to this one kilo. So I'm now going to go six pounds times one kilo divided by 2.2. I'm going to type that into my calculator. And so in other words, it's going to be six times one divided by 2.2 or just six divided by 2.2. And that's going to be 2.72, 2.7272 and on and on and on and on. Or we can just say, um, and by the way, pounds cancels out so that's just going to be kilograms or in other words we can kind of round that to 2.73 kilograms and that seems like a more reasonable answer so we're going to leave it like that okay and that's how you do this one right here uh, next question says what is the total weight of a loaded truck if the truck weighs 2.6 tons and it is loaded with 15 skids of boxes that weigh 210 kilograms each give your answer in tons so the idea is is uh for everything that we see in this question convert to tons so a truck weighs 2.6 tons so great so i'm just going to write keep a running tally of everything 2.6 tons right there and we're dealing with these kinds of tons right here and this is a metric ton a metric ton is different than an imperial ton a metric ton uh, is 1000 kilograms is equal to one ton and we can see that unit uh, right here so one ton equals 1000 kilograms so there's where that says right there. I wrote it backwards, but it doesn't actually matter uh, which way you write it like that, okay? So again, back to this question right here, we have 2.6, uh, that is, um, the truck weighs 2.6 tons, and it's loaded with 15 skids of boxes that weigh 210 kilograms each. So uh, if I wanna find out how many, um, we have 15 skids, each weighing 210 kilograms, so I'm gonna go 15, times 210 kilograms to find the total weight of everything. So I'm gonna take my calculator, 15 times 210 equals, kilograms. Okay, so now I have to convert this 3,150 uh, kilograms into metric tons. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do just like before. We're going to take this 3,150 kilograms. Again, since it's like a kind of a standalone, it's like over, over one. But uh, I want kilograms to go away. So this is on the, this kilograms right here is on the top. So I need to put kilograms on the bottom. And we're going to put that on the, the kilograms associated with 1,000 right here and one ton goes up here I'm just going to use the symbol uh, little t for that um, and so i'm going to go 3150 kilograms times one divided by a thousand i think i can do that in my head 3.150 and since kilograms cancels out that's just going to be tons now that number can get added to the weight of the truck which is going to be 3.15 tons. We're going to add these things up. Okay. And so for our final answer, then it's going to be 5.75 uh, tons. That's how much this thing is going to weigh. It's a lot. Okay. Now we have uh, another question right here. It says, 
Genova salami sells for $1.79 per 100 grams at the deli. How much does 350 grams cost? So in here, we don't have a conversion for dollars to grams, okay? And that conversion was given us by the grocery store that's saying $1.79. Uh, essentially, it's saying uh, one point, sorry, that's my bad symbol for a dollar. Dollar seventy nine uh, is equal to 100 grams. You can think of it as that way right there. So if I want to know how much 350 cost, if I was using um, this kind of dimensional analysis kind of method, I would go 350 grams. Again, that's on the top. Um, I want this grams to go away, so I'm going to put this grams on the bottom. So I'm going to write 100 grams right there, and then I'm going to write 179, right like that. Now what you can see is that grams are going to cancel out, because grams on the top and grams on the bottom, they cancel out, and then you're just going to be left with dollars. So I'm going to go 350 times 1.79 divided by 100. So I'm gonna do that in my calculator, 350 times 1.79, and then I go divided by 100 equals, and I get 6.265. Now they don't want a half cent, so it'll probably my answer will be six dollars and 27 cents so you're around it and that's how much uh 350 grams of salami is going to cost me now what is the price per kilogram okay so now i'm going to be taking this thing right here 1.79 over 100 grams now, what I want to do is I'm going to look up this, how many grams are in a kilogram. And we can see right here what I'm uh, boxing in is that um, uh, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So back to this question right here is that I want this grams to go away. So I'm going to put grams is currently on the bottom. So I'm going to put grams on the top. Okay, and then I'm going to put kilograms down here. The reason why I do that is so that grams is on the opposite, so they cancel each other out. And that means I'm going to put in these numbers here. So 1,000 grams goes right there. One kilogram goes right here. And now I can just go, uh, after these two things cancel out here, it's that I will have uh, dollars over kilograms. And that's what the, the question wants. What is the dollars or the price per kilogram? So I'm gonna go 1.79 divided by 100. So 1.79 divided by 100. And then I times that by 1,000. And then you get your answer, which is 17. 0 0.90 um, and that's going to be dollars per kilogram and that's going to be my answer okay now there is a quiz that will be attached to the Microsoft Teams it'll be on the same stuff as this the questions will be slightly different um, go over this um, do the worksheet. There's a couple extra questions in the worksheet. I'll post a video about how to do the worksheet uh, as well a little bit later. Um, and then once you feel comfortable with this, you feel comfortable doing the practice worksheet and you got the right answers on these things, then attempt the quiz and, uh, and see how you do. Um, I want to emphasize, we've talked about this before, is that the quiz, quizzes uh, in here are going to be what we call formative assessment. That means they're going to be for your learning um, to see what you are doing well at and what you may need some work on. So 
uh, feel comfortable, try to do some of this stuff, and then try some of the quizzes uh, when you feel ready.